let's quickly revise what is management of breach how do we do that first of all where you do ecv for ecv the patient should be either in early labor or she should not be in labor and the gestation age should be more than 37 weeks means she should not be preterm if the patient is in late labor or if the ecv has been done twice and it has been unsuccessful then you have you have three options one is assisted breach which we are going to discuss now one is breach extraction which we don't do anymore that is totally the entire baby is extracted out without any effort from the patient and the third is cesarean delivery which is the most commonly done surgery in breach presentation for ecv initially there was no recommendation of any tocolytic but now acog recommends terbutaline can be given it should be done where emergency cesarean services are available RH profile access has to be given after this and it should be done under continuous NST that is fetal monitoring. What are the prerequisites of ECV apart from the gestational age and the facility of emergency cesarean section? First of all, lica should be adequate. In the sonography, lica should not be scanty, otherwise the baby will not move. Then membranes should be intact. There should not be any rupture of membranes and there should be no contraindication for vaginal delivery. Only if the patient is able to deliver vaginally, there is no CPT, no placenta previa, then only you will do an ECV. What are the possibilities after ECV? First is when it is successful in the first attempt. That's a very nice thing. You send the patient back home and tell her to come back when she is in labor. Second is it was unsuccessful in the first attempt. You called her back in a few days. You did it again and now this time it was successful. Now you don't wait for the patient to go into labor. You do an immediate induction of labor. If the second time also it was unsuccessful, you just send her back home and book her for a cesarean section at 39 weeks. All right, this is how you manage ECV. When do you decide whether the patient can have a vaginal delivery or elective caesarean section depending upon the Zatuchny Andros score which you can see on the screen. Now if the score is less than 3, you go for a caesarean section. In vaginal delivery, assisted breech delivery, basically we let the baby come out on its own and wherever it is stuck, whether it is stuck at the level of the buttocks or the shoulders or the head, at that time we assist and there are different maneuvers. You need to know students all the names of these maneuvers. First of all, delivery of the buttocks. If the buttocks are coming out and the patient needs some help, you may do a groin traction or sometimes Pinard's maneuver for frank breach if the legs are not coming out. Coming to the shoulder, if the shoulder is getting stuck, remember the shoulder is the bis acromial diameter that is this much, which is 12 centimeter. It occupies the same oblique diameter which the biotrochantric hip diameter is occupying. Now, this shoulder is going to follow the heart's rule and what is the maneuver? It is Lofset's maneuver to deliver the baby's shoulders. After coming head of breach, the most common technique that we use here is burn Marshall technique where the suprapubic pressure is given along with the contraction which is known as Chrysler's maneuver. We let the baby hang by its own weight and then the entire baby is turned upside down on the mother's abdomen. Another maneuver is Bratch maneuver. The difference between the two is that we do not let the baby hang by its own weight and we do not give any suprapubic pressure in the second maneuver. Then there are another two maneuvers which are almost similar. Mauricio Smelly Beat Technique and Vigan Martin Technique. The difference between the two is in Vigan Martin, you're putting a finger inside the baby's mouth. In the Mauricio Smelly Beat, you're not putting a finger inside the mouth. You're putting the finger on the forehead and the two malar bones. So it is malar and jaw flexion along with shoulder traction in Morisolus smelly bead technique and a suprapubic pressure is applied. In Vigard Martin, the difference is that you put a finger inside the mouth and you do not give any shoulder traction. That is the only two difference between the two techniques. The last technique which can be used for the after coming head after all these manuals have been used is the forcep. Piper forcep is the one which has been designed for after coming head which is not available in India. It does not have the pelvic curve. It has a perineal curve. So it is known as the reverse pelvic curve not available in India. In India we can use the Das forceps and the Nivel Barney forceps. Now there is a special case in which the back of the baby is facing posteriorly. So the ventral part of the baby is coming out. Okay so you can see anteriorly this part of the baby is being seen. In this case the baby's head will not deliver by flexion which is normal in breech delivery. Now the baby will deliver by extension because it is kind of a ventral baby, ventrally facing baby. In this case, the manoeuvre used is Prague's manoeuvre for occipital posterior position of the after coming head of the breech. That is all you need to know about the breech management. Thank you.